time you think something good is going to happen uh, to Billy Napier, something unforeseen occurs. I know you've been writing about that in your most recent Monday column. Uh, good afternoon. Tell us all about it. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, Billy's had a rough six, seven months, I'll tell you what, Paul, recruiting the quarterback position specifically. Not the rest of recruiting. I mean, he's, he's doing a really good job with the rest of every other position on the field except recruiting. I mean, he starts out with, in, you know, in early December when Anthony Richmond decide to go, decides to go to pro. And then the 11th hour, Michael Pratt, the Tulane quarterback, tells Florida no. He was going to uh, transfer Florida through the portal. He gets out of the portal, stays at Tulane. They go to the Cotton Bowl. They beat USC. Then he gets Graham Mertz, and the Florida fans lose their mind because, you know, it's Graham Mertz. And then the whole Jaden Rashada incident happens, and there goes another quarterback. And, and now the, the latest is this Austin Simmons, this uh, recruit from the 2025 class who was going to reclassify by two years because, Paul, if you can believe this, he's 17 years old, and he already has two years of college done academically. He's graduated, he's graduated from high school, and by the end of the semester will have his AA degree in college, college equivalent. So he literally will go into college as a junior. He flips, he goes to Ole Miss, and that was the quarterback that Florida was looking at to be kind of to save the situation. Because right now, Paul, they've got uh, the very enigmatic Graham Mertz and Jack Miller as his backup, and then a project and Max Brown playing quarterback. And that's a, that's a tough way to go into an SEC season when you really don't have that much at quarterback. Matt, uh, losing a player like that is one thing. Losing it to a conference foe is another. Not that you really think a lot about Florida in, in Ole Miss, but is there any explanation uh, uh, other than young people do young people things? Uh, you know, we know, Paul, honestly, in the last two and a half years since the since the NCAA decided, you know what, what the hell, let's just add NIL and, and add one free year of uh, transfer for, for players without having to sit out, and let's just see what happens. Since then, uh, nothing surprises me anymore. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you have, um, you know, you have this high school player, Austin Simmons, who by all rights is a terrific player. I mean, if you, look, if you go online, Paul, and you look at his, his um, high school tape, he's terrific. He's a terrific player. Um, and a guy that's that smart, obviously he's got – something going on between the years. I mean, this guy's got potential, right? Um, and he goes to a school that's just full of quarterbacks right now. And, and you could also say, you know what? He's going all this because of Lane Kiffin. I can absolutely see that. You know, Lane Kiffin's the guy who has a history of developing quarterbacks and getting ready to play in the NFL. I can absolutely see that. Um, could it be NIL? Of course it could. But, I mean, at, at this point, with, with all that's going on over the last seven months of Florida, with the quarterback position, nothing would shock me for any reason why. And now they're basically there. They're down to Mertz or Miller, or if they can somehow get a graduate transfer over the next three or four months that leaves the school, that didn't have to get into the portal by April 30th, and that could just leave and, and sign and play at Florida immediately, they could do that. But I have who's out there? I have no idea who's out there. Matt, Billy, Billy Napier came in with such expectations and optimism, and, and there's every reason why that was the case. Uh, where are we right now? Uh, when you're in, other than the a terrible record and a ridiculously difficult schedule, what's the uh, patience meter look like for Florida Nation? Yeah, the schedule's not getting easier. It's going to be more difficult next year. Um, I, 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 think, I think there's a little realistic idea of what he's facing. There's no doubt about that. Um, but, you know, you know Florida fans, Paul, and it's just like any other SEC fan group. At some point, you get impatient. Um, can they can they sit through another six and six year? Probably because there's an idea of this five star quarterback DJ Lagway coming in. And and again, you're talking about a true freshman in the best conference in college football that's adding two really good teams. Um, so it, it's I mean it, he's he's in a difficult spot, but he's recruiting really well. Other than that spot, other than the quarterback spot, he's got that team. He especially next year will have it to the point where he will have guys there that it's his team. He'll have turned it over. But the question then becomes is what happens at the most important position on the field? Can they get the production they need to win games that matter? Because, you know, Paul, you, you will not win games in this league if you don't have a quarterback that can make plays when it's third and nine, you're on the road, and the crowds are going crazy, and you need a play. Matt, you said – Florida fans, you know, or SEC fans, but I, but I, I've always felt they were a different breed. 
this is a program <laughs> <laughs> that has been spoiled. Uh, these are among the most unique fans in the world because they've won so much. Uh, they're not winning right now. H how how do they cope and how do they deal with a uh, with, with with a very topsy turvy program already? Well, Paul, honestly, I, I think 13 years of not winning the SEC kind of humbles you a little bit. I, I, I think they've been humbled, honestly. You know, you, they haven't gone through that kind of stretch since before Spurrier. So it, it's the reality of it is it's not just Alabama and Georgia. It's now, I mean, look at LSU. I honestly think LSU could win the SEC this year. you got, you know, three legitimate teams ahead of them, maybe more than likely four or five legitimate teams ahead of them right now in the pecking order. And if you go by last year, and what happened on the field last year, that, I mean, that was a not a good look last year. But, again, it's his first year, you know, and, and it, it takes a while for buy-in. But, yeah, to your underlying question, is there patience? I mean, we'll see after this year, Paul, honestly. If, if this team goes 5-7, and seven, it, it's, they're not going to be happy. But the reality is this, Florida's not paying him $32 million to walk away. They're not going to pay him, you know, 24 and a half, 25 the following year to walk away either. So he's – He's kind of is where he is right now. He's got a couple years to turn it. He just needs a quarterback. I honestly believe he just needs a quarterback. I mean, let, let's say Graham Mertz does a 180 and completely plays like he hasn't played the last three years at Wisconsin. They could probably win eight games. If, if he plays smart and doesn't turn the ball over, they could win eight and then go to, go to a bowl game and maybe win nine. Then, you know, then it's a little bit different. Then you're a little excited about the following year with new freshman quarterback. Yeah, and but realistically, we're you know whatever Vegas knows, they know more than I do. Uh, they, they have they have the Gators uh, below 500, and, and then you oh, turn no the pa yeah then you turn the page. Uh, I'm just looking at next year, F home games: LSU, A and M, Ole Miss, and Kentucky. It's brutal. Georgia, and then at Mississippi State, at Tennessee, and at Texas. And that's well, on top of have, what Florida, uh, Miami, Florida State, and Miami. Florida State. Yeah. Yeah, Miami, Florida State, even UCF at this yeah, point. No. The last time they played UCF, they lost in the bowl game to them. So I, I don't know how, if you're Florida, you can look at UCF and say, yeah, that's a W. It's not. And, and so, I mean, I'm with you. It, it's, it's a difficult haul right now. But, I mean, I, I, Billy clearly knows what he's doing. I think he clearly knows how to recruit. I mean, will it get to the point where he might have to bring in a specific quarterback coach or a specific offensive coordinator and play caller? Maybe. Maybe because at the end of the day, Paul – this past season, he was the guy coaching Anthony Richardson. So you, you can say, well, Anthony Richardson looked bad half the games he played. Well, that's coaching. Guys play how they're coached. And you, you know better than, uh, than anybody, Matt, because you, you do a lot of uh, NFL down there, that if Anthony Richardson has success, uh, every, every success that he oh, has yeah. will be used against Billy Napier. That's a bad look. Uh, if he comes out and he's like the NFL Rookie of the Year or he even has a great season and he's just you can tell he's – a, a strong quarterback, and he's going to be, have a very good career in the NFL. It absolutely looks poorly on, on Florida and, and Billy Napier. No question. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.